Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is now Tuesday, the 18th of June, 2024. On today's update, I'm going to tell you all about PTC1. Still very hard to get used to saying that. Maybe there's a better way to designate these systems in the future, but for now, they are called Potential Tropical Cyclones, hence the three letters PTC, and it's number one of the year. All right, we're going to talk about the impacts, what to expect from it in northern and central Mexico, and then, of course, for parts of Texas. And then, you bet, we'll take a look at what's going on in the rest of the tropics as well. All right, thanks for joining in. Let's see what's going on out there. First of all, check out the satellite animation with it this morning. And let me go ahead and create the GIF animation. I forgot to do that before I loaded everything up. At least this will give the most fresh version possible as we load it up here on the Airbnb Wi-Fi. There we go. So, again, very broad area of energy sitting down here with potential tropical cyclone, one part of that overall Central American gyre. However, today it's just a little bit more concentrated around this area right in here. It just needs more organized showers and thunderstorms, and then it could become a tropical storm. Air pressure already fairly low. I think the last I checked it was like 999 millibars and the winds are about 40 miles per hour. Remember, Recon went out there yesterday, and they were checking things out and found that it was fairly well organized, especially for such a broad system here. Typical for the month of June to get these broad, large rainmakers. Some wind, some onshore flow, especially up here in parts of coastal Texas, down into parts of Mexico, and that's where the storm surge will be. Yes, there will be storm surge, just the wind pushing the Gulf of Mexico towards the coast will create some inundation levels there. Meanwhile, out in the Atlantic, we've got this area to watch, really nothing to be concerned with. There were a couple of model runs where it looked kind of interesting, but no longer, so I don't think that's really going to amount to much. Back to the Gulf, though, and the area around Central America, this is going to be the region to keep watching even after PTC-1 exits into Mexico in a couple of days. So check this out on the vorticity signature today. We can clearly see a more concentrated area, albeit very broad. That's still very large, but it is more concentrated. You've got a deeper signature of oranges and red here indicating more of that vorticity down at the lower levels, 850 millibars. You're trying to bundle that energy out in the tropics. That's what these systems are ultimately trying to do. And when you see this, even though it is fairly large and still somewhat, I guess you could say globular, two different blobs or globs of energy, whatever you want to call it, not quite what we're looking for, like, say, peak season, but for June, that's typically what we would see. And all of that means energy and impacts, heavy rainfall especially, and we'll go over that in more detail in just a minute. Also, just notice this out here in the extreme eastern Atlantic, that's a piece of energy coming off the coast of Africa. That's the first one that's looked like that, at least on the vorticity signature, that I have seen so far this young hurricane season. Probably not going to amount to much, but as these pieces move west with time, you never know what happens when they get into this area, especially in June and into July, uh, where climatology favors those regions. The other area, right over here, still spread out and not as much uh, as the concentrated areas of energy as we're seeing with PTC-1. But nevertheless, we'll watch this feature to see what happens with it in the coming days. All of this energy should spread off to the west and northwest with time. And it's really hard to say. It depends on which run of the global models you watch uh, as to where this eventually makes landfall, if you want to use that term. Because that energy will eventually work its way around this big old area of high pressure that's sitting up here. And uh, where that comes into the coast remains to be seen, but I'm not too concerned with it. There's not much of a signature on the global models for this to do very much. All right, National Hurricane Center, this is really interesting. Here's PTC number one. There's the yellow X for our disturbance out there in the Atlantic, well to the north of Puerto Rico. Development odds generally going down over the next few days. But this is interesting. When you look at the seven-day outlook, and I tweeted about this last night, uh, you've got the red X, which is PTC1, inside of the yellow hatched area for the next system, 
that could be coming along down the road a piece. So if you mouse over, it's hard to do, isn't it? It doesn't even let you. Isn't that interesting? There should be layers here, but the way the interface is, you can't even find or click on PTC1. You have to you just click on that. That's funny. Interesting how that works. The web development team at the National Hurricane Center might be able to sort that out. But that's PTC1 currently sitting on top of a future development area down the road over the next seven days. So that's that's how that works. And then there's the development area potential for the next system there out in the Atlantic. Low probabilities of anything developing really. But along this area here, you might get some showers, maybe a weak low pressure area moving in over the next few days. We'll watch that closely. All right, so what I did want to show you, uh, back over to the home page here. Remember yesterday in the update I talked about the different pieces of information here on this sort of dashboard. And today I want to focus in on two different areas. First is the peak surge. And they've got it here on the home page of the Hurricane Center's dashboard, right? But also, and I want you to do me a favor, follow this uh, handle here, NHC Storm Surge, really easy to do, NHC underscore Surge. That's the Twitter account for the Storm Surge unit at the National Hurricane Center. 120,000 followers, that should be 1.2 million in my opinion. They have really good information. I work closely with some of these folks down there with my project. Obviously unofficial. I don't work for the government. We do all of our work and donate it to the government, so to speak. But yeah, we do collaborate. That's a better way to put it. So we've got some colleagues down there, and they are fantastic. And they've got all these good products. And one of them, of course, is this peak surge forecast. And as you can see, the areas in yellow there, two to four feet of inundation above normally dry ground and why would that be the case why would be would we be seeing surge way up here maybe even to the louisiana texas border and then certainly one to three feet over here in parts of southwest louisiana the easy way to explain it is the concave shape of the overall coastline through here look at that it's like a big c right well it depends on which way you look at it i guess it's mirror image when you have the camera but you understand it's a concave shape and the, uh, the wind blowing in there, any kind of wind stress on the Gulf of Mexico in this area literally just pushes it towards the coast. And if you guys live there and you, you're watching this and you live there and you've been there for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And why is it focused up here more towards Galveston Bay, either side of it a little bit, rather than farther south? Well, that is a very interesting question. And I think a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with just the way the wind fetch is, the shape of the coastline up there, and just how it catches that energy coming in from that potential tropical cyclone. So if PTC-1 were to strengthen, then this uh, uh, the overall surge values might be higher. We'll have to wait and see about that. Unless, and here's an interesting clue, it contracts and that wind field shrinks a little bit, Sometimes you see these systems do that. They start off broad, affecting a large area, and then they develop a, I don't want to say an inner core, because this isn't really going to do that, we don't think, but a more tightly compact wind field, then those surge values could be lower. So it just all depends on where and when this system tries to tighten up. So just something to point out to you as we go forward, watching potential tropical cyclone one. The other issue, of course, is the rainfall, and the rain will be significant down here. Let's use blue to highlight this. Anywhere from two, that's the darker green, up to, let's say, eight inches or more. There are even a few oranges that are showing up in some of the guidance in here. No, I don't want to take a journey on Windows. Why in the world would it do that? <laughs> Thanks, Microsoft. I was on a roll. All right. Let's see if I can get through this without being too distracted. So, yes, yeah, some of these rainfall totals, that was just totally random. Uh, in excess of eight inches. And then notice over here into Mexico, inland Mexico, some of the mountains trapping some of that rainfall, or graphic lift, we call it. And maybe, just maybe, towards West Texas, you could get it on the action. So, some of the positives of a tropical system. Some of these rainfall totals certainly getting up there 
uh, and coastal flooding uh, on top of that with the onshore flow and then any heavy rain down here could be hard to drain off. So just be aware of that. Make sure you got your quick dams. I talked about them enough, right? I mean, not enough. You know what I'm saying. I've talked about them a lot so that you all should be aware of some good flood mitigation products out there. And this is the type of thing that quick dams can help you with. Seriously. All right. So that's the flood threat here from the National Hurricane Center homepage, or at least their um, dashboard homepage, that is. And then there are other really good graphics that just kind of highlight, much like we see with the severe weather potential uh, each day, you've got these different panels that show Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning. We're uh, familiar with this with severe weather, right? The SPC outlooks, moderate chance of flooding over the next uh, three days, cumulatively there, right? Extending all the way in towards San Antonio, and then at least a low chance, or a slight chance, as they say, going all the way over here towards parts of western Texas. So just be aware of this, especially if you're traveling through the area, you're not familiar with how some of this flood risk works, you got the hill country in there, just be aware. And a big part of all of this are sea surface temperatures and they are running 29 to 30 Celsius all through here. And that just basically means warm, 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 mid to upper 80s. There are even some 31 Celsius right up against the coastline there, but that water is very shallow and easily disturbed. Bottom line, there's a lot of energy out there for this system to take advantage of. And you can really see that energy here. Look at that. That is the classic gyre look. On the modeling here, this is down at the uh, 5,000 foot level or 850 millibars. Wow, that's really interesting to see. This is the 6Z run from today. If we move this out into time, that large area of energy does eventually move into Mexico. But even at the 5,000 foot level, notice all of these wind barbs coming in, what? Perpendicular to the Texas coast. And that does translate down to the surface as well. I mean, 5,000 feet is not that high in the atmosphere, so certainly the surface flow will also be out of the east and east-southeast. And what is in the way of all of that easterly wind, meaning that it's coming from the east? Texas. And on the north side of the circulation, Mexico. But then to the south, of course, the flow would be offshore. So that's why this area up here is most prone to the storm surge inundation from this system. There's the other feature there looking very innocuous, no big deal, wouldn't pay too much attention to it unless you are a boater out there because that orange and red and all that, well that's energy and that is showers and thunderstorms more than likely so just be aware as that makes its way across the southwest Atlantic and maybe towards Florida in the coming days. So look, once that system gets in over Mexico, another one tries to brew up in the almost the same area and then we have another little bump sitting out here that we have to watch. It's just one after the other, and that is what we thought might happen this year, especially in the early part of the season before the strong tropical waves start to show up. Later in July, hopefully it's going to be later, give us some time to you know breathe a little bit, right? Um, and it's going to just get really busy from there. But for now, it's generally these large, sprawling systems that can bring a lot of rain, and of course, as I've said numerous times, rain is an impact, so we have to take that very seriously. But nothing that looks too threatening from an intense wind and surge event in the coming days. In the European model, this from the Zero Z run last night, generally the same theme. A couple of systems rolling into the Gulf there, south of Texas with a landfall of a center. But remember, these systems are large, and you're going to have that onshore flow and plenty of energy working its way in, bringing heavy rain to the Rio Grande Valley and beyond. All right? Before I leave you, I want to show you this just to kind of give you a juxtaposition. There's a nice 50-cent word for you as to the different weather that's happening around our country and why we have to be so weather aware. Over in the northeast part of the country, just geographically speaking, I know that Ohio is not part of the northeast, but it's just a term northeast part of the country if you divided it up, okay? I don't need comments, oh, Ohio's not in the northeast. But look, there are heat advisories and even an excessive heat warnings. Those are those purple areas right through here. 
And that's a big deal. That's a lot of people under a lot of heat stress. And some of these areas up here do not have air conditioning built into their houses. Meanwhile, along the Gulf Coast, there's your tropical influence. And then what do I see out here in the west? Wow, parts of the Great Basin and in the Rockies. Uh, snow and winter weather advisories and related. And then, of course, we've got the terrible fire that broke out here in New Mexico yesterday. There are still ongoing fires over here, uh, at least one that I'm aware of in California. And then the uh, excessive heat warning, I think that's what it is, in parts of Arizona where, of course, that is more typical and more expected. What is that? Yep, excessive heat watch. My fault. Not warning. It's a watch. But the bottom line is a very active pattern, even in the absence of major severe weather or any landfalling hurricanes, everything else pretty darn busy with the heat warnings and our tropical system and its influences along the Gulf Coast and even some winter weather out west. Wow, lots to keep track of over the coming days. All right, still on some family vacation time. We are going to be headed up to Charlotte today. We're going to catch a Major League Soccer game tomorrow in Charlotte. That's a lot of fun. My 13-year-old is quite the avid soccer player. He's a goalkeeper. And a pretty good one at that. And it's not just a dad bragging on his kid. He is legit pretty good. So we're going to check that out. And then I'll finally be home Thursday. And we'll see what's brewing in the tropics all along the way. But no worries. I got the laptop here. Everything's running fine. And um, that webcam was acting up earlier this spring, if you guys remember that. But yeah, I'll be able to keep you up to date uh, tomorrow. And then a quick update on Thursday as we head back home. And then I'm back in the office for a few days. And then after that, who knows what? I either go back out to Colorado and do some more hail hunting or grab the Tacoma, which is in the Denver area right now, Parker specifically, and um, maybe start heading back and getting ready for hurricane season. Who knows? Remember that book, Where's Waldo? I think it's a book, right? Or at least a poster. Uh, where's Mark going to be? Pretty busy. That's, that's where, that's what. Anyway, thanks for taking the time out of your day to check me out. Don't forget on YouTube... Come on, subscribe to the channel, become a part of what we're doing here, hit the notification button or whatever it is these days so that you get alerted when I post an update because I appreciate you watching. I really do. From all of us at Hurricane Track, we all appreciate it. Again, I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll see you again tomorrow.